Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. All right. So we've got a great session ahead of us today. But I always say that, don't I? <laughs> I always say that we've got a great session and it's true. It's very true. In fact, today I've even um, prepared a, a little, little bit of notes here for you. And for those of you who are in superconscious transformation, uh, we're going to go through some stuff that's normally just kept for, for that. Those of you not in the superconscious transformation uh, program, you're going to get a sneak peek into some of the things that, that happen over there. But I got really called to do this session this morning. I was sitting in meditation and I was asking, asking myself, you know, what, what do I really want to do my session on today? And, and this, uh, happy birthday, Marion, as well. And this popped into my awareness is just what was needed. So uh, it's always a good thing to follow that. So we're going to be talking about creating uh, some health transformations. We've had uh, some pretty amazing miracle health transformations. Anyone on here that's had one of these? Uh, anyone? Anyone that's had an amazing miracle health transformation using uh, Magnetic Mind? Uh, we may have some of these people that are on here, but we've had some pretty incredible ones, including obviously uh, Dean regaining his eyesight. I've actually had, I believe there was a, someone named Alex who emailed me in about regaining their eyesight as well. We've had people who have had brain tumors disappear, diabetes healed. Uh, I've seen x-ray sent in, uh, someone's transcended the, uh, the big C. So thanks, thanks for posting that in. So, so lots of amazing stuff, chronic migraines gone. And about a year and a half ago, I believe it, it got me thinking and I started to ask myself, well, how does this happen? You know, how does, how does it happen that, how does, what is the, I guess, what is the physics of miracles? How, how does this work? How does it how does it work that some people can can create a, a beautiful health transformation? How, how does that work? And uh, and so I explored it and looked at it. And the first thing you might be surprised uh, that I say this is that you're not broken. Uh, you're not broken. Hip bone has grown back. Wow, twenty years younger, Lynn. You're amazing. Uh, I did a session on myself back realigned. Amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. Anyway, uh, you're not broken. And uh, the current body that you, you have, it, there's nothing wrong with that. And in, in fact, it's following the exact instructions you've given it. So we don't need to fix, obviously, what we've already got. Instead, we must learn how to create. Now, there's a lot of uh, research around this, and I'm sure people on here can help fill me in with the blanks. Uh, how quickly does a human body recreate itself? I believe even bone marrow uh, recreates itself within eight years. Uh, so, so it's a everything is is shifting and recreating itself all the time, and you have to ask yourself what is it create, creating itself on, and that's the instructions. What are the instructions? The DNA. How do we give different instructions? And, and how do we, uh, yeah, a lot of things, it's 30 to 90 days. Hey, Alex, uh, lots of things uh, are shifting very, very frequently, especially soft tissue, but many things can also take a bit longer. Um, but we're talking about completely recreating from the instructions up. We're not talking about trying to fix what we already have. Yeah. Christine says, that's how I healed my heart. I kept focusing on the fact that every three years you have a new heart. Yeah. Very good stuff, isn't it? Very good stuff to realize that you are recreating yourself all the time. So there's no point fixing something. It's about getting new instructions. You know, uh, if you create a, uh, you know, a meal or a, let's say you create an amazing chocolate cake and it's, it's not the way you want it. Don't bother trying to, you know, fix the one you've already got. Just, just recreate, create a new one, you know. And, and that, and that's the idea is that we start with creation. So, so that's going to be the basis of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start with uh, just a, a little bit uh, of science and things, which I think you guys will enjoy. 
And uh, let me just pull that out and I'll do a little bit of a, a screen share. I've sent you guys a little bit of notes. Was everyone able to grab those notes? Doesn't matter if you can or can't. Um, it is so fun if you're here in the chat box to be uh, looking at some of the amazing uh, testimonials that are there. So, so it's very good. Uh, someone will, someone um, will repost the notes link if, um, if others haven't got it. Yeah. So someone, someone here could do that for me, can't you? If you've already got the link, you can repost it. I'll post it one more time and, uh, and then you, you guys can look after everyone else. Hey, I think that's, that's fine. So look, here's, here's the theme is, hey, you create it all. Uh, can everyone see those notes? Can someone give me a thumb up or a yes? You can see that. I hope so. Someone let me know. Just want to make sure. Thanks, Sabina. Uh, thanks, CC team. Thanks, May. Thanks, thanks. Okay, so you create it all. You're not your body. You're the creator of it. If you put your body in the right conditions, it'll produce a healthy outcome. And this is actually what it desires. Your body actually desires to be healthy. And a lot of the things that we have are actually its best idea. So, so today's recode is going to be, be pretty cool. So I got this amazing story here. And the reason why I gave you the notes because it's pretty small. And this comes from Joe Dispenza's book. And it, and it talks about in how in 1981, that they took a group of men in their 70s and 80s, and they, they took him out to a five-day retreat. And they were asked to pretend that they were younger again in fact to pretend they were 22 years younger now a harvard psychologist uh, did this and what happened is when when they took them out there they surrounded them with environmental cues so they had to they had to pretend that it was 22 years earlier um, talk about the news talk about sport that was happening uh, and, and it was 100 that they were to, to go and, and be 22 years younger now after, and they did this multiple times, after each of the five-day retreats, the researchers took measurements. And what was fascinating about these measurements, the bodies of the, the men were physiologically younger, structurally and functionally, okay? The researchers discovered improvements in height, weight, and gait. The men grew taller as their postures straightened. Their joints became more flexible, their fingers lengthened, and their arthritis, dim arthritis diminished. This is so incredible. The men literally became younger in five days, okay? Their memory sharpened. They scored better on tests of mental cognition by 63%. 63%. So you got to ask yourself, well, how the heck did that happen? Now, what's fascinating is these men that uh, were in their 70s and 80s, by the end of the five days, they were playing football. They'd given up their canes. Now, how many of you can I just hear in the chat box? Who thinks that's a pretty amazing study? It's from 1981. We don't hear about this very much, do we? And uh, full credit to Joe Dispenza and his book. I, that, that's a complete excerpt from his book, and he's a legend. But who thinks that's amazing? Who thinks that's amazing? There's actually some research just come out of Stanford uh, a few years back, how they, they took uh, two groups of um, hotel maids, and they just told one group that uh, the exercise they do in cleaning um, hotel rooms was uh, equivalent to, to what was needed to, to burn a significant amount of body fat. And um, just by telling them that that's what was happening, they started burning all this fat, even though they didn't change anything different. And it was significant compared to the, uh, significant compared to a control group. They didn't change anything. They just thought this is going to do this. And I just think this, this sort of thing's incredible. And here's, here's what it is, is when you give instructions to your body, your body only receives those instructions from what you give it. Does that make sense? It gives the instructions. It, it doesn't matter if it actually came through your eyes or you're just believing that you're 22 years younger. It was the instructions, you see? It's very important. And so many of us are bombarded with images you know, it's hard to have a healing, hey, or it's hard to lose weight or this or that. Or you see, what are you telling your body? Stress and all these things. And so what does your body uh, then believe in and reaffirm? So what's interesting is there's this thing called the placebo effect, hey? Who's heard of the placebo effect? Yeah, Dispenza wrote a whole book about it. Now, 
any any pill that is ever put on the market has to get compared against a placebo effect. Now, a placebo effect is when you take an inert substance, something that has, has no chemical compounds that is known to produce a result, and, and, uh, and you tell someone that it's gonna give them the result that, uh, that you're hoping it will. And based on just belief alone, people get that result. Now, it's a very interesting thing, the placebo. Now, what's funny is that um, by calling it placebo effect, We've stripped it of its truth. We've stripped it of its truth. See, its truth isn't a placebo effect. Its truth is, if I believe it, I create it. Does that make sense? See, see that, that's the truth, but we call it a placebo effect like it's this magical thing. But, but 30 to 40% of, of all uh, results can be attributed to placebo which really, you shouldn't say placebo, you should say to a person believing, you see. Isn't that interesting? We, should, we shouldn't use the word placebo, a person believing that it's going to work because they found if they made it more believable, they could give, give the same pill and if they, they put a stamp on it and if they made it a, a word that didn't have enough vowels, you know, and, 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 and if they said it was this and if it was had research behind it, if it was more believable, then there was a higher effect. Now that's that's crazy. And so you, I don't think we should call it placebo effect. I should, we, we should just call it, if I believe and I tell my body what I believe, then that's what's gonna happen. Isn't it true? I think it's, I think it's very true, very fascinating, very, very fascinating. And, and so what we're looking at here is how what we believe, what we think, what we, we hold as true, unconsciously, consciously, super consciously, then that's what's going to, to be able to manifest. The key isn't just conscious because we can all sit here and go, yes, I'm 21. You know, I'm 21, I'm 21, I'm 21, but you're unconscious in the back there going, what are you talking about? I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. No, you're fucking not, <laughs> you know? So it's about getting it on all levels. See, as soon as someone knows that it's a placebo, <laughs> that doesn't work. As soon as they know it's a sugar pill, they go, well, I'm just having a bloody sugar pill, you see? So it's about, it's about going all in and understanding and believing. And that's a very, very important thing. So, so just to back up this with a little bit more um, proof, let's, let's talk about this, is, is that uh, you can actually change your personality and change your symptoms. So uh, on dissociative disorder, uh, identity disorder, or what used to be called multiple personality uh, disorder, where, where someone is actually known to shift and disassociate from one identity and get into another one. Here, here's something from the New York Times, okay? Where when people uh, actually uh, change their, uh, their personality, uh, the, their health conditions change in an instance. Some of them, uh, some of these patients who have uh, multiple personality or disassociative uh, identity disorder, uh, they actually have to carry different eyeglasses around because their vision changed with each personality. Now, this is what I found when I was trying to understand how did, how did it happen with Dean? I was like, how did he regain his eyesight? And it was, what was interesting is as they shifted into one identity, they needed eyeglasses. When they shifted back, they didn't. And, and that's fascinating. See, another woman that was, oops, it keeps on moving. Another woman admitted to hospital for diabetes baffled her physicians by showing no symptoms of the disorder at times when one personality who was not diabetic was dormant. And I, and I put the, uh, the link and stuff here for you. Uh, who thinks that's pretty interesting? That, that one person changes. Now, I couldn't find it, but I've heard that there's people that even have their eye color change as they changed identities. Now, now check this out here. Uh, the, the, these people here, multiple uh, personality disorder subjects, would show, why does that keep happening? Uh, greater variability in visual functioning. And they also, uh, also change eye muscle balance and refraction and all sorts of things. But also from here in the National Alliance on Mental uh, Illness uh, from their website, they even present physical differences, allergies change, right or left uh, handedness. Uh, and again, eyes come, come in again, which seems very, very fascinating to me. So let me ask you, who thinks this is pretty profound? 
that when someone shifts, they're the same body, but they shift their identity and their multiple personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder. And just by changing that identity, their health conditions shift. Hey, like, and, and you know, you could go do as much research as you want. This is facts. This is, this is what happens. And uh, to me, this is absolutely bloody incredible. You know, I think it's just incredible to think about this. And this isn't just, you know, this is peer reviewed science, like Na National Institute of Medicine. This is not, you know, th this, this is stuff that gets checked and is, it's, it's not, you know, this is not hokey. This is, this is real. And uh, that, that, so that, that's when we pose the question. Okay. So if in the identity that I'm in now, if I'm in the identity that I'm in now, well, doesn't it make sense that if this has some symptoms, there is another identity or another way of being that doesn't have these symptoms? Who agrees with that? That must be true. Yes, you must have the ability that if you go into a new identity, the current systems no longer exist. True? And if, you, if your brain needs research, go and research this. I've given you a little bit of a, a start, but go research it because you'll just find facts after fact, after fact, after fact, study after study that lets you know this is absolutely true. And I'm going to explain a little bit of the science and then we're going to we're going to get into it with some depth here, because the key is the reason why this changes is that when you give a different instruction to yourselves, a different protein is created. This different protein literally creates a different body. So, so when we hear, you know, oh, Dean regained his eyesight, it's, it's not that we can't understand how it happens. It's because we are recreating uh, our eyes all the time. We're recreating ourselves. We're recreating our skin. We're recreating. And because we're recreating, if we give it enough time with different instructions, guess what happens? The, the new flower is born, the new thing. If we plant the right seeds, the new thing, the new thing. You've just got to stay in the new identity long enough. Uh, for it to happen. So, so let's investigate this even more, hey? Let's investigate this even more because I think it's very, very important. And those of you in Superconscious Transformation, obviously we go into this in much more detail in session six. So I want to talk about how your internal environment um, shapes your genes. Okay, so the DNA is stored in the nucleus of every cell in your body, okay? And it is uh, the raw informations and instructions that make us who we are, okay? And, and this DNA uses the instructions to produce proteins, okay? And, and what, what happens is the cell makes these proteins. So a muscle cell makes uh, actin, myosin, skin cells, collagen, and elastin. Immune cells make antibodies, okay? So cells make proteins. Proteins uh, are the raw material that we use to construct our body and our anatomy, okay? So proteins control our immune system, digest our food, heal our wounds, uh, et cetera, okay? Proteins are the expression of life. Okay, so summary, okay? So, so DNA is in every cell. Every cell makes protein, protein makes you, okay? Now, here's what's interesting. In the mapping of the human genome, Okay, it was expected that since we have 140,000 genes, okay, and, and, and that we make that would make about 100,000 proteins, and then 40,000 would of those would be used uh, for regulatory proteins, and 100,000 would be, be used to make the body. They anticipated that there would be an equal amount of proteins and genes, but here's what was interesting I want you to hear this there was only 23,000 okay, uh, that were actually discovered. So there wasn't one gene per protein. Does everyone get that? Give me a yes if you get that. So it wasn't just this gene creates this. Instead, instead, the 23,688 work together to make the 140. So, it, so it's more of like a recipe, okay? It's more like they turn on and turn off to create it. And it happens instant, instantaneously. So it all happens at once. And, and so this is what's fascinating is you already have the same 23,688 uh, genes that every other human has. 
It's just how those are coded up, those recipes that turns on and off different proteins, which then creates your body. Can you now see how we can shift into a different body? You see that because we already have the proteins available. And this is a metaphor, right? So what turns on and off is by the signals that we're given, the signals that we give the genes. Now, I'm trying to keep this as, as open and as friendly and non-scientific as possible. Um, so, so excuse me when I, when I skim over things. I just want people to get it. What this means, what this means is your environment controls which of these uh, which of these genes are turned on and off. Okay, that's what's interesting. We all have the same. We all have the same, your environment. And what that means by environment, your thoughts, feelings, actions, family, friends, sexual habits, spiritual practice have an, an impact on your gene expression, which creates the protein, which creates us. So let me just uh, stop this screen share and come back to you guys for a second. Who's getting this, by the way? We And I'm glad, I know I'm passionate. I know, I'm really passionate about this. Here's the summary. We all have the same amount. We all have the same coding. It's whether they're on or off. What they've found is it's the instructions that we give that turns them on or off in the right order. That then creates our body. How do we give those instructions? Well, it's internal, meaning it doesn't matter what's around us. Well, it, 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 you can control a heck of a lot of it internally anyway, meaning you can close your eyes and you can send an instruction that will change the expression of your body. And that's what's happening. When, when these people shift their identity or these, these men go out into the wilderness and they start saying, yes, it's, it's 22 years earlier. They're giving a different instruction. You see, they're feeling different feelings, turning on different things. And then in five days, results. You see? So we, we can understand it. And, and that's what we must understand is our, our genes have this enormous library of possibilities just waiting to be taken and used in the right way. The, the way that we do this is, is we, we become it now. We become it now. We be it before we see it. Okay, and, and you, you become it. And this is why those with multiple or disassociative identity, it's why they show different things because they become it now. They become it now and they stay it long enough that then their eye color changes or their um, diabetes isn't there or their allergies change or their eyesight change. So what am I getting at? It is your identity. It is what you are giving to your cells that change what it is that you're expressing. And that is a very important, a very important discovery. So here's a little bit how it works, okay? You have environmental external signals, but then you also have your mind interpreting it, okay? This sends instructions down into your nervous system, which sends it down into your gene. If we blow up and zoom in on what's in the gene, okay, what you'll see in the gene is you'll have receptor sites, that are binding, getting things that are coming down from your, your nervous system. And then you have proteins that are getting created, okay? Inside of that, you have all the instructions of what's getting turned on and off. But basically, here's what I want you to get, is you have thoughts about your environment, you have feelings, you have things that are going on. This gets sent down through your nervous system into your genes that create proteins. These proteins then create your body. So when we're tuning in to create a miracle health transformation, what must we do? What must we do? We must be in the end result of that healthy body. We must be feeling that healthy body. We must be experiencing it. So if, if you ask yourself, okay, if I had the healthy body that I choose, what would I be doing? What would I be feeling? How would it be? And if you stay in that field and recode any doubt that that's what you are, Guess what's going to show up? Guess what's going to show up? The exact mirror of the instructions that you're giving to your body. And so we must ask ourselves, okay, how do I do this? 
how do I do this? How do I, how do I become that? Without trying to fix what I already am, I get it. There's no point in fixing this. By becoming that, this no longer exists. So I don't want to try to fix this thing because because it's do, done its best job. I'm going to create that. And as I create that, this will fall away. You know, just 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 it will fall away. It will no longer exist. I'll just become that. You know, we, we don't have to fix the old. We just become it. And that's powerful. That's powerful. So, so here's, here's how we do it. And this is what we're going to be doing today uh, in, in, a, in a minute. Is we have our old self over here with the past. And then we have our new self over on this side. Okay. And uh, what we're wanting to do is become this and let go of that. Okay. So this is our thoughts, our actions, our feelings, our identity. And, and what we need to do is we need to cross to become this. And so at any moment, you're partly your old self and partly your new self, right? At every moment, there's a part of you still there, a part of you still there. And your job is to take all your consciousness and place it on where you're going. Superconscious, self-conscious, unconscious, all focused on where you're going and stay in that and stay focused there, stay being in that, become that, engage in it, live like that be that, eat like that person will eat, hang out where that person hangs out, become that. And by becoming that, this no longer comes away. But in any moment, you're, you're, you know, you might be um, 50%, 50%, and then you might stay focused, and then you become 70, 30, 80, 20. And what happens is as you stay focused and as you shift, you, you'll, you'll get to a point where you're no longer that old person anymore. Does that make sense? You no longer, you're just like, oh, I don't even remember being that person that was addicted to that or who had that diagnosis. Or I don't even, I don't, oh, I don't even, I don't even remember them. Right? I don't, oh, oh yeah, that's, oh, that's right. I used to wake up groggy with like, uh, with, oh yeah, I forgot. You'll just forget. I love it, Charity. Well done. Does it, you'll just forget it. So, so let's let's get into exactly uh, how to create that identity. Can I just ask who's excited about this session, by the way? I'm sure all my coaches are. So it's one of my favorite sessions, and, uh, and I love talking about it. I love talking about this stuff because it truly is, you know, uh, it, it truly is magical. It truly is magical. Okay, so how, how do we do this? Well, the, the first thing we must do is we must understand how to build up a uh, a complete uh, emotional alignment with the new identity. So that the first thing that we must uh, align is our physical surroundings, okay? So you want to ask yourself, if I am that healthy uh, body, um, what do I surround myself with? So, so when I'm there, and it's a very important, environment is, is the most important, that's why it's at the bottom. What am I surrounded by? And also a good question, what is not there? Right. So if I'm in my healthy body, what am I surrounded by? You know, there's there's something we talk about in the creator course. We talk about uh, environment as suggestion, environment as suggestion. Your environment is going to suggest to your unconscious a lot about um, how life is. And, and so what are you surrounded by? Are you surrounded by happy people? Are you surrounded in a happy environment? Do you get to spend time in nature? What, what's your environment? And so you want to ask yourself uh, and I want to ask you right now. Uh, well, actually, I'll go through it and then we'll do the exercise. We'll do the exercise. You must have your environment in, in alignment with the new you. The next is your behavior. So if you had that new healthy body, how would you act? This is such an important one. I think most of us uh, say, oh, I want to lose weight. But rather, we need to say, well, what would I be doing if I, did, if I had a healthy body? I'd be dancing. I would be... Um, hiking, I would be playing with my kids, I'd be doing these things. So what behavior, I'd be waking up in the morning, I'd be going to the gym, I'd be bike riding, you know, what would I, what would I be doing? What would I be doing with, with, uh, with this body, with this healthy body, right? What would I be doing with this healthy body? The, the next thing uh, that, that you want to ask is, well, what capabilities or skills would I have? What tool sets? Another way that I, I think about capability is know-how. What do I know how to do? What do I know how to do? So if I was, if I was in, what, what is it that now that I'm already having this healthy, what do I know how? 
beliefs. What do I believe about the world and others? What do I believe? What do I believe? The next is identity. What do I believe about myself? And then the last is your ecology with your family. And we'll go into a full recode on, on all levels of this. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to build up this new identity. Okay. We want to, we want to build it up. And then we want to recode any resistance to doing every single thing in there. Does that make sense? That's what we want to do. Build it up. Then we want to recode it so that we become it. Does this, does this sound right? Does this sound quite logical to you guys? Yeah? Yeah, it's logical, isn't it? So we, first we want to go, okay, this is how it will be when, it, when I'm there. And, uh, and then I want to have no resistance because I need to start living it now. I need to start living it now. And then, as you know, and, and you can go do even more research, if you start living it now or when you start living it now, well, then you'll be giving the instructions to your to your body, giving it down to the DNA. The DNA will be creating new proteins. New proteins will create a new body. Does that make sense? And so we can look at the science as much as we want. But today we're, we're going to skim through it real quick. I sent you I sent you the note so you can look at it further if you like. We're, we're going to do the process. So uh, everyone happy to work on uh, creating a uh, a new identity? Hey, a new identity. Who's up for that? A new identity and a new relationship to to um, themselves and this being in alignment with this this healthy body. So, so we're going to uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create it, and uh, it's going to be a great exercise. It'll be one that you will need to return to for a while, and, and I really do want everyone to understand: is you do you do need to choose this, you do need to be in it, and as much as you might like to do one meditation. Uh, and then wake up the next day and no longer um, have a sore knee or a sore back. You might need to get a bit of practice at accessing the field. About, gosh, about seven months ago, I had a knee injury and I was really bummed about it. And I, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I go, oh, gosh, I can't play tennis. I can't do this. and I can't do that. And I was like, man, what's happening? So I went to a physio. Physio said, oh, it's your patella tendon. And it's, you just need to rest. And I was like, oh, I don't want to rest. I'm super conscious Chris. <laughs> so I went up to my Tesla chamber, sat in my, sat in my chair, and uh, I completely accessed nothingness. And it took me a very long time to, to not need to solve the problem of a sore knee. It took me a heck of a long time. I was so entangled in my sore knee and who I was, and I became nothingness. Once I was able to return to the nothingness, I then was able to focus my conscious energy on myself, sprinting and running and feeling good. And I focused myself on that, focused myself, and I, and I got into it, and I was living it in my mind, and I was sending the right instructions, and I did it. And, and I reckon maybe two hours passed. I, I couldn't tell you now. But uh, however long passed, I realized, wow, this is so exciting. And I just got this intuition. I need to go, go for a run. Got straight out of there, went running, knew me, and, uh, and away I went. Away I went, new knee. So it is possible that if you learn and you practice and apply yourself, that you can shift things very, very, very fast and you can notice them. And that's just me talking about a little knee problem. If you've got other things that may take a while, you may need to sit in these end results and teach your body for a while. Does that make sense, everyone? So I want you to realize that your body might need time to get new proteins from your nutrition to recreate new things. Is that, is that fair enough? Hey? And so, you know, it's about, it's about choosing it every day.
Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.